In this video, we will walk you through an IceQ channel install on an auto defrost merchandiser. First, the tools you'll need are the following. Impact drill driver, wire cutters, inch and eighth bimetal hole saw bit, helping hands, moving blanket, plumber's putty, step ladder, pen and paper to write down the serial number of the controller, and any other tools you might have in your toolkit. Next, the following is what's contained in your ice cube kit. The kit contains one channel sized appropriately to fit your particular model. The parts bag included in the channel kit includes the following. Power supply, zip tie, one inch hole grommets, cable ties, Y adapter, coax sealant, half inch sheet metal hex screws, and one controller. Once you have all the necessary tools and materials at your site, you can begin the install. The first step is freezer prep. Begin by removing enough ice to allow 12 to 16 inches of elbow room at the top of the ceiling of the freezer. Next, lay down a moving blanket on top of the ice to collect any debris that may fall during installation. Once your workplace is prepared, you can move forward with the channel install. Take the channel out of the box, remove the plastic, and be sure to check all sensor connections. The channel has a mark to denote the center. This mark faces the front of the freezer during the install. Next, extend the cable out the left side of the channel. On the Model 100, you will have to unfold the channel open to its six foot length and using the metal coupling, secure the four screws in the center to stiffen the channel and give it its rigidity. Next, lay the channel on a flat surface with the sensors facing down and the exposed wires facing up. Quickly check to make sure each sensor is connected to the wiring harness. Then place the magnetic helping hands you were provided as a new customer, one on each end, and then place the channel inside the ceiling of the freezer, parallel to the front doors. Place it as close to the evaporator as possible. It must be five inches from the front edge of the freezer and centered in the middle of the freezer from left to right. On some indoor auto defrost models with glass doors, the light may need to be removed. Using the half-inch hex screws provided, secure the channel of the ceiling of the freezer using your drill driver. Once secure, make sure you remove your helping hands to ensure you don't leave them inside the freezer upon your completion. Next, use the 1 and 8 inch drill bit and drill an exit hole out the back of the freezer, just to the left of the evaporator housing, or through the top of the freezer. This will depend on whether or not you have access to the back of the freezer. A hole out the back is preferred so water cannot seep inside. But if this is not possible, drill a hole through the top of the freezer into the compressor compartment, being careful to avoid any components. The exit hole should be offset to the left of the evaporator and should be one inch from the ceiling. Now, thread the cable through the hole you drilled and using the cable ties, secure the cable carefully to the ceiling of the box, being sure to take all the slack out of the cable. Using your plumber's putty, pack the hole around the cable so it is watertight. Do this on both the inside and outside of the freezer. Then take a black plastic grommet and snip it into a C shape. Place the grommet around the cable and slide it into the hole. Make sure to tidy up any loose putty so it looks clean and professional. Do this on both sides, the inside and the outside. Now you're done with the inside aspect of the installation. Remove the blanket and any other material inside. Remember, don't forget your helping hands. Now using your step ladder, gain access to the top of the freezer. Take the screws off the cowling that covers the compressor on top of the freezer and remove the cowling. Next, take the Y adapter supplied in your install kit and find the hot black and white wire, which is part of the merchandiser's wiring harness. It is the one with the black and white two-prong lead. This wire should supply power to the light if there's one. If there is no light, this lead oftentimes has black electrical tape on it. Attach the Y adapter to that connection, black to black, white to white. 
Tapping into this wire on most wiring harness will give you AC power whenever the freezer is running. Now, take the cable from the back of the freezer, coil up the excess wire, place a zip tie around it and carefully zip tie it to a suction line on the compressor, being sure not to attach it to any high temperature or moving parts. Next, take the controller and write down the serial number. This is crucial so you do not screw the cowling back on without noting this number. Take the power supply wire found in your install kit and plug it into the 110 volt end on the Y adapter. Then take the black controller and attach it to the main cable. Carefully insert the 10 pin connector with a quarter turn to the right. The final step is to take the other end of the power supply wire and plug it into the last open wire on the IceQ main cable. On any outdoor model, be sure to wrap the sticky coax seal provided in your parts bag on both the connections of the power supply, making sure they are watertight. At this point, your IceQ channel is now live. The blue light should be blinking and it will begin communicating. Secure the cowling back on the freezer. You are now ready to assign the device to your location using your smartphone or tablet. Open up your mobile phone browser and type in icecue.cool. If you've never logged in before, you will see a page that looks like this. Go ahead and put in your email and password and hit login. What we want to do is find the location that we just added that freezer to. That location we can find by hitting the hamburger icon up in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and find the hourglass to get your search screen. And in this case, we set up a test location. You could type in the account number, address, any part of the location. I'm gonna just put in the word test. And here we can see the location, but it has no freezer. So let's go ahead and assign a freezer by clicking the plus sign. We're gonna go and put in a model 60 upright. The product ratio is going to be 50-50. On the left, we're gonna sell sevens. On the right, we're gonna sell twenties. The condition of this freezer is good and it is by the register. Hit save, then hit the X to go back. Here's our Model 60 freezer, but we need to assign Ice Q. Easily enough, just click the green button, and I hope you remember to write down that number. If not, grab your ladder, take the cowling off, and find the Ice Q serial number. Go ahead and type it in. It's a smart search, so as you type, it finds the numbers. Go ahead, select the device, hit save, and now I've assigned this device. The next thing you'll need to do is click the refresh to have the unit give you the measurements that you just recorded. Anytime you power cycle the unit, you will get new readings. So make sure to validate sensors one through three in this case, and make sure the temperature is good. You can see that the unit called in, the time, the temperature. These are the number of inches from the top of the channel to the first bag of ice. So we have 27 inches, 24 inches, 23 inches. If everything looks good, you are good to go. Congratulations, you just installed IceCube.